What did, uh, when you're having conversations with Tony, was he laying out the vision to you? I mean, one of the first trademarks we saw, and I even rattled it off a minute ago was Tuesday night dynamite. I know that he had, he had met with uh, Kevin at, at that costume party years prior, or maybe the year prior. And that's Kevin, what, what, what Kevin, the folks who were helping run Turner. And, and, and I'm wondering like when he's telling you, Hey, uh, Jr. we want you to come over. I want to just add context to this. He'd not yet announced the television show. Right. So respectfully, if you don't have TV, what do you need Jr. for? I'm sure right. it was at least the question people were asking. We know he was working behind the scenes. Did he lay all that out to you? I think I can get us a Turner show. I think yeah. it's going to be Tuesday night. You kind of thought all that was coming through. I thought so. Yeah. <clears throat> and he knew that I had, uh, a history with the Turner people. And so, uh, and I knew that if they were serious, it was damn serious. So, uh, uh, that was for dynamite. And then I think we added rampage or something just to give ourselves another show to, to talk about. But, uh, no, I, I, I felt very confident that TV is essential. There's two key points in a pro wrestling lexicon. And that you need to run a successful bit, excuse me, hiccups to run a successful business. And that is Conrad talent and television. You can't do one without the other. They're both equally important. If you don't have a good talent roster, you're probably not going to be successful. And I thought Tony had done a great job, uh, of, uh, you know, gathering talent. The Bucks at that time were hot a tag team as there was in the world. It seemed like Kenny Omega was the best bout machine. You know, it's just, uh, Cody Rhodes was a star. Uh, we didn't know he, we, he wasn't the star to the level he is now, but coming into AEW, uh, we knew that he was a special talent. And because I've been around Cody since he was a little boy through my relationship with his dad, uh, I felt good about that. So I wasn't amongst strangers, even though I, uh, hadn't met the young bucks in person at that point, I don't believe. Uh, so it was, uh, again, it, it comes down to just looking at the money term. You know, I, I looked at it just like I would, if I was cutting myself a deal in talent relations, I wanted to make sure that all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed and everything is going to be copacetic. I wasn't worried about my money. Obviously Mr. Khan's, <clears throat> as I mentioned at that time was had a net worth of about 8.2 bill. That's a lot of money, man. It sure as hell covered my deal easily enough. So, uh, it was good. It was good. I, I had just, it, it was, it clicked. I, I credit Barry Bloom for that and his ability to communicate with the cons and their lawyers. And, uh, he's still doing it today for me. We, uh, we should talk about some of the talent who we know are coming. I mean, we, we know that hangman, Adam page and Kenny Omega and, and the young bucks, they're already signed up, uh, right away as well as Cody Rhodes. But the other name that was being floated around a lot in this era, and maybe it's because Kenny Omega and yourself were both represented by Barry Bloom, but do you remember conversations about Bill Goldberg? before AEW got up and running that, Hey, there's a rumor that maybe they're going to try to be working with bill. Maybe casually Conrad, but nothing official above the line, the lead story, you know, if it leads, if it, if it bleeds, it leads type thing. Uh, not much bills reputation. Uh, of, I don't want to say indecisiveness, but sometimes, you know, bill had certain wants. And he was represented by Barry as well. So, uh, I just never asked those questions. I just, I didn't feel like I needed to know. I didn't feel how, how me knowing that information was going to help anybody. If, if Goldberg and I were best buddies and I could influence him, then I would have, but that was not the case. So I don't think Goldberg was on the radar very prominently at that point in time. We, uh, we got to mention that. Cody and the team came to your house to shoot a video, to announce your signing. Mm -hmm. And that's where it's revealed as, as Cody referred to you, I believe Jim F and Ross. 
<laughs> yeah. Really fun moment. The big reveal. What'd you think of the video and the presentation announcing that you were now all elite? Well, Conrad, the fact that those guys flew from Atlanta with a camera crew and Cody to my home in Norman, Oklahoma, uh, was very, I was very impressed with that. Uh, they said they were going to do something along those lines. They kept their word. They did it. Uh, and I didn't demand it. That's what they wanted to do. They, they looked at my, me as a significant signing for their young company. And so I looked at that in a very positive way. So I, I had a, it was good, man. It was just really good. I, I, the best negotiation I've ever been a part of communication wise, you know, uh, I don't know that Tony Khan and I had any conversations to speak of about my deal. I, I let Barry do all that. And it, it, it made it more professional. Uh, it just made it better all the way around. So, uh, I was lucky. I had good representation and I was even luckier that my representation and AEW's representation were communicating well. Let's talk about the end of the, uh, WWE deal. I mean, towards the end, you're even making appearances while you're still uh, not signed with AW. I guess your WWE deal has just recently expired and you're telling inside the ropes, Hey, I'm hoping to sign with AW on this day. So the announcement isn't exactly a secret, right? I think what we haven't touched on is what happened towards the end of your WWE tenure. As I understand it, when they signed you to that contract, maybe one of the reasons they signed you, they being WWE pronoun boy is they wanted to keep you off of the world of sport for ITV across right. the pond. And you took that WWE deal. It was your home, but maybe they did stop any sort of potential growth from world of sport. But at the same time, they allow you to finish up with access. So you technically have a WWE and an access deal, but you're looking for permission to re up with the access deal, which allows you to call new Japan. And WWE doesn't want you to do that. Not only do they not want you to do that, they don't want you to work on the UFC fight pass show either. So it's almost like you're almost being paid to sit at home. They're icing you out. Is that the way you felt? Yeah, I hate that. Uh, you know, how long, how much time do we have left here? Uh, I had, I had a great offer. Uh, the fact that m me getting additional exposure whether it be world of sport, world of sport was a big deal, man. I mean, that was uh, on the most powerful outlet in the entire country. Uh, so I had a great experience with the guys at uh, ITV and, uh, world of sport, world of sport was like, uh, the wide world of sports to them, because in the heyday, the world of sport was big money, big audience. And so I, and I had a blast doing that. I, I produced that show. Uh, I, I remember vividly meeting with the talents, having production meetings the day, the day or two before, uh, answering questions. Uh, we don't want to see this. We don't want to see that. Uh, we want to keep this a family friendly show. So nobody go out there and grab their nuts, things like that. And, uh, so it, I, I had, I looked at that as a, as a historian type person, me being a part of world of sport was a real cool thing for me personally. Uh, and, uh, I wish we'd have been able to do more of them, but that just wasn't as the cards at that time, but I met, I made great friends and influential people that I still communicate with from time to time. It's just, it's just awesome. So I, I, it was good. You can tell him it's weight I've lost Conrad. You see that picture? Yeah. Do it what again. A, what a fat yeah. fucker. Different human being now, man. I am. I am. I'm ripped. <laughs> I love no, you. For that. No, I'm not. I'm just still a fat guy wearing smaller black shirts. 